Good afternoon and welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us today. You know, first of all, happy winning day, everybody. So we are going to talk a little bit uh, about, uh, you know, an important topic about what women want at work, of course. And but before moving to our panel today, I really want uh, to put into context a little bit the take with main takeaways uh, of uh, our survey, what women want, as I said. We all see the pandemic's disproportionate impact on women at work and the, the gender parity, of course, is accelerating. Women are disproportionately affected by both the social and the economic crisis due to the pandemic. Uh, Overrepresented the job losses across uh, industry, including retail, leisure, hospitality, and uh, as well as uh, I would say uh, underrepresented in uh, in um, in growth sectors, uh, including the tech, uh, the operational, lo the logistics. Uh, uh, why also really taking on caring responsibility at home? Although women, you know, just to give you some uh, some data that are always important, globally make up around 39% of the workforce, they suffered 54% of job losses during the pandemic. And you know, this is globally, Europe was around 47% of the workforce and may account for 55 to 60 percent of the workers displaced. So this reflects the predominance of women in customer service and uh, office support roles, uh, such as, uh, for instance, food service, receptionists, and cashiers. If we move to the next chart, uh, I would say that uh, even before the pandemic, women took on uh, the lion's share of responsibility in caring for children and uh, elderly relatives. And uh, that imbalance has grown even more uh, lopsided during the COVID. In US, for instance, mother has spent, you know, uh, more than 15 hours per week than fathers, uh, really focusing on how the household tasks and education as compared to the fathers as well. And the traditional work schedules do not always accommodate, unfortunately, the child care gap. Um, so as we prepare for an hybrid future, you know, you see that we really uh, are working remotely now in with hybrid model we have to be careful really to avoid a two-track workplace. Men in the office, women at home, where they may miss out on the working and on their development. So the risk of a she session is actually real. Not only have women taking on more at home, but really the pandemic has impacted roles really predominantly held by women as we have seen so far. So uh, in the last uh, 12 months, actually organization, uh, they are changing their business model, they are digitizing much more, and they have transformed at speed and scales as the way people work, uh, really consume and socialize, really move very fast, went virtual really overnight. So, uh, I would say that uh, a couple of questions here, move to the next. Has the, the pandemic really demonstrated how relevant and needed are the leadership skills uh, usually associated to women leaders today? More than ever, we believe efficiency, risk management, but always empathy are uh, crucial to navigate business uh, nowadays. So can our companies really afford the reduction of women in the workplace? So all these questions, you know, that are really crucial, we are going to uh, talk today uh, together. If we move to the next chart, we uh, 
found that established female leaders acknowledge familiar obstacles throughout their career, including, you know, lack of role models, gender career path, and lack of access to sponsors and actually influential networks. Uh, so this is, I believe, it's uh, uh, this is what uh, we are going to talk uh, uh, together today with our uh, uh, amazing panel uh, that I'm going to really introduce uh, right now. So this is was just uh, a, a little bit uh, a, a takeaways of, uh, you know, to set up the stage for our conversation. A couple of recommendations uh, before we get started, uh, we uh, introduce uh, uh, our amazing panelists. Uh, first of all, please uh, uh, ask questions through uh, the chat, uh, you can you can post your question and we will answer. And of course, you can ask questions and we hope to have time at the end of our conversation. So thank you so much. Now I'm going to introduce uh, our great panel today. And uh, I'm going to start with uh, really Marceline Bayer, which is our global RPO, RPO brand leader and the vice president of Europe of Talent Solutions. Then we have Giovanna Fontana, which is our finance director, Manpower Group Southern and Eastern Europe. Then we have Yarka Yaroslav Ritzeslova, which is country manager, Manpower Group uh, Czech Republic. Uh, then uh, Faison Early, which is country manager of Manpower Group Turkey. And uh, last but not least, Susanna Rumitz, which is country manager of Manpower Group Slovakia. So we have great women and we will have a really an exciting and valuable conversation with them. But I'm going to start with uh, Marceline. So Marceline, welcome to this conversation thank and you, please Stefano. introduce yourself. Yes, hi. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stefano. And thank you for you to be uh, to enable me to, uh, to to join this International Women's Day on talking a point that is dear to my heart uh, already since the start of my career, to be honest. I have been part of panels and discussions about um, uh, enabling diversity in the workforce, uh, uh, and in this case, typically female. Uh, and the interesting part is sometimes uh, uh, we as females were offered like typical female support, like laundry support, child care, and, and, so, and so forth. And then sometimes in my early days, I was sometimes a little bit irritated and I thought it's not just about that. It's also about career development. Um, uh, sometimes it's also about uh, in the in when I uh, progressed in my career, it was more about becoming less emotional as a female. Uh, so be adapting more to the male environment in working in companies. So my strong belief, it's a, it's a very important topic for for companies because business has been proving to be better with a better balance of of, uh, of uh, diversity in general, but in this case of the sexes. Uh, and I think uh, we, we um, yeah, we as a company, I believe strongly in research and data. Uh, what you measure is what you get. So uh, I'm, I'm very, uh, I find it important to have that research and to really use it in the companies to improve uh, the uh, sustainability of female in a company and also female leadership in a company. So not just go for the stereotype things, but really use uh, what what re really uh, what is really necessary for women uh, in, in all kinds at the soft side and the hard size sides of the of the job. Thank you very much, Stefano. Mar Marceline, Marceline, I believe you set up something very important, you know, talking with our clients, you you can underline the importance of uh, the diversity uh, topic, especially now uh, when company needed to recruit at scales. Uh, you know, uh, after the pandemic and uh, really moving to uh, really source and find different skills. Exactly, exactly. And and at this, at this moment in time, uh, with scarce skills, uh, uh, the, it is about companies pro op offering propositions to the talent, not so much the other way around. It's really about propositions to the talent to enable talent uh, to be, uh, yeah, to be attractive to talent uh, and to women as well, because we, we uh, there is a bit more needed uh, to to make the work environment for women more um, attractive most most of the time. Yeah, thank you so much, Marceline. So let's move uh, quickly um, to Giovanna. Giovanna, welcome to this panel and thank you for uh, participating. Uh, so over to you. 
Thank you, Stefano. I I like to add uh, differently some information about my work experience in order to share with you some additional information. I start to work in a big company in Italy, and like my first experience, a family company very traditional. Traditional. I worked there for several years, and I had the opportunity to have. To do, uh, to do a lot of experience in finance operation and for a lot of project. But as specified before, it was a very traditional old fashioned company. In that period, I'm speaking about 30 years ago, and uh, it was very difficult for young women to grow in a company like that. I remember I, I had uh, my first project, I had to transform some reports and uh, treasury and uh, and uh, uh, statutory report from a manual paper sheet managed manually it was a, a digitalization project in excel file and so this is my first project i do it my boss was very happy he told me uh, giovanna you did very good work i'm very happy about the improvement but i cannot promote you because you are too young and you are a female this was the situation different is the situation now in manpower when i joined manpower I had very another environment first uh, for myself because uh, um, was rating my personal growth. I realized that look, the number for me was not enough. The technology was not enough. I would like to watch to work much more with people. I realized that working with people give my give me more satisfaction and also to be honest, bad numbers. And so and the second one was the opportunity. I was lucky because I entered and joined manpower when Italy was in a developed period, developed mood, and I worked a lot to, to improve uh, processes. And in that way, I growing together with the company. So now, as you know, I was financial director for a couple of years, and now I am the financial director of the region, South and Eastern region. It's important in uh, what I can leave you like a message. Uh, we need to invest. It's not easy our journey and we have to put all the our capability and i'm speaking not only uh, has specified also by marceline uh, technical skills but also soft skill that could help us to understand and to um, resolve and solve better our different situation stefan up to you oh thank you giovanna for your great story very interesting and you know we need to to really uh, put a greater focus uh, on uh, changing the prevailing gender dynamics in the workplace that you have uh, uh, you have mentioned in your in your story. So thank you, thank you very much. And uh, let's uh, let's move to Yarka. Yarka, you know she is one of the most powerful women in Czech. So Yarka, over to you. Thank you very much, Stefano, and. Uh, Thanks for this opportunity. As you know, I'm, uh, I'm being for a long time with Manpower, started as a uh, business manager, whatever it meant, uh, 20 years ago. Then I became country manager, means general manager, uh, 15 years ago. So for me, question of uh, women or not women was not a question at the time. But as I grew with the company and meeting a lot of people in business and in government as a partnership, I saw that sometimes there are prejudices, you know, people are judging you because you are women and a young woman at the time, as, as Giovanna said. So I started to be a big, a big supporter of uh, women and uh, of her of their place in a, in a workforce i think we still have a long way to go and i will still remember that my first contact with manpower was a woman who helped me to enter to manpower at the time so she some somehow uh, sponsored me and i think that women as one of the think which should help them uh, in the future to be more in leadership teams, they need much more to be 
sponsored than mentored, you know. So even if today I am a, a country manager of a company which uh, has uh, like 160 million of uh, euro of uh, revenue, I'm still sometimes judged recently when I've, I was meeting one of the minister of our government and he said to me, oh, I didn't know you are so nice girl, you know, so it was kind of a compliment because he called it me girl, which I am not at all, but it, it was still this kind of, you know, treatment when you uh, when you are woman and when you are leader, uh, manager or responsible for some big and important areas, you have this all the time. So I think there is a lot to do in this area. Thank you. So thank you, Yaka. Let's say women power and you are a great example of it. So let's move to uh, Faiza. Faiza, as I said, country manager of Turkey. So Faiza, over to you. Thank you, Stefano. First of all, I am very grateful to be here with you today and welcome from Turkey. And on this day, I salute the ones all around the world who choose to challenge uh, the barriers around women empowerment and take an action for gender equality in their communities. And I believe that as women leaders, even today, uh, we must support our women who are struggling to access resources in their social and business lives. Also, I would like to touch uh, my career a little bit. Uh, if you look at my journey, I'm the country manager of Manpower Group Turkey for the last three years. Prior to that, almost nearly 20 years, I managed many different teams and projects uh, in the fields of consulting, IT and digital. In fact, uh, I was a very curious student during my university years and when I observed that the most change was in technology at that time, I decided to take a part in technology at the consultancy side. Trends in the technology and IT or what we see as solutions have changed frequently and also in my career I face the difficulty of women, uh, being a woman leader. Uh, at that time when I was first promoted, uh, I became a manager at very young age when I was uh, 27. At that time all my employees were older than me and also male and it was really a tough time for me because it was difficult to have their respect at the beginning but in a way I overcome immediately I gained their trust in a very short time by focusing uh, outputs instead of problems acting with the knowledge with a transparent and open communication and uh, uh, to be honest then I never encountered this uh, difficulty again. In this uh, last five years of my consulting career, I have managed the business and technology transformation project uh, in various industries when I was at Oracle and Accenture. At that time, uh, we set up the processes, we defined the technology behind, every day things are changed, we start to talk about big data, industry 4.0, artificial intelligence, but in all this journey, I saw here that no matter how we configure the processes or bring the technology we want, all these processes need to be supported with the right competence and talents regardless of gender. That's why I work in a such valuable industry and I am very proud to be part of Manpower Group. As women leader, uh, it makes me proud to be to together here with our success-oriented manpower group, women ladies, uh, and on these special days. And also, I would like to uh, step to thank you, Stefan and Visas, who made this organization possible for us. As manpower group, uh, we believe companies should make investments uh, to value the diversity of thoughts and experiences in order to unlock potential of all women leaders. Also, uh, in Turkey, as all in the world, we see that female employment rates ratio is seriously declined. Studies reveal that uh, women are affected negatively than men during and after such a crisis moments also this was true for the COVID-19 outbreak. 
On the other hand, we are happy to have 82% women employees as Manpower Group Turkey. So, uh, as one of the leading advocates organization of gender equality, we believe that every action we take will make a great contribution to the development of our women leaders. So, before I finish, I would like to celebrate the Women Days of all women around the world and hope we will overcome the most important challenge worldwide. Thank you, Stefano. Thank you, Feza. Thank you for your uh, your story and your experience. Uh, so we can we can see through your actions and words uh, how we can make progress, uh, really gender parity in this new reality. And as you mentioned, actually, we are you know uh, a company with more than 85 percent globally of women, and this is, I believe, it's uh, uh, it's uh, it's a great uh, witness of. Uh, the importance of having women uh, in uh, in uh, in an organization. But let's move to Susanna. Susanna, country manager of Manpower Slovakia, as I said. Uh, over to you, Susanna. Thank you, Stefano. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm so delighted to be here in this uh, in this event, and uh, even because this is a very important day for us uh, as International Women's Day. Uh, actually, what uh, I would like to say is uh, that uh, I was working for many years in different industrial sectors with different leadership styles. And five years ago, when I joined Manpower, I told to myself uh, as a woman leader that uh, I will try to lead this organization in a way to enhance the cooperation among each other, to support discussions, debates and admit different uh, views of the issues. Uh, and the result, uh, and as a result of this decision, our Slovak manpower is made up of 75% uh, of women and uh, half of the managerial positions um, are in hands of our skilled women managers. And uh, our leadership style is, uh, as a company, uh, is more based on, on collaborative approach uh, rather than on directive one. Uh, and I tend to run the company in cooperation rather than, uh, than individually, actually. On the other hand, I have to say that uh, uh, I have to try to keep the necessary dose of self-confidence to be able to make decisions effectively and independently and uh, uh, to solve uh, possible conflicts. And um, what I do not do for sure uh, is to compare myself with others. I rather try to be myself talking straight and communicate directly and uh, and clearly, ensuring uh, things are done and other people are involved, holding them accountable for their responsibilities. Uh, and I'm convinced this is the key of the success. Uh, uh, Manpower Slovakia five years ago uh, was the fifth recruitment agency on the market. Uh, now we are the leaders in our country. And I think having more women in leadership roles in our organization is important because female leaders uh, uh, can change the perceived conception about who can lead and uh, what what are the qualities uh, uh, necessary to have uh, in a leadership uh, position. Uh, and women in these types of roles, I mean leadership roles, uh, break down the barriers and show everyone what women can and should achieve. I think uh, all we are, uh, who we are here, uh, we are the demonstration that uh, that uh, uh, this is uh, this is really important, and and this can change and uh, and inspire maybe others uh, for uh, others and and the future uh, women leaders as well. Thank you, Susanna. Thank you very much. You, so it, it's really very important what you said, you know, advancing towards gender parity in the workplace is far more than the right thing to do. And, and the really data, because we mentioned data, you mentioned data, especially Marceline, is clear companies with women at, uh, uh, at the top perform actually better. And uh, as well as in the private sector, you know, numerous studies uh, have found uh, that uh, uh, you know uh, having more women in the workforce uh, and uh, a, 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 of course a greater balance uh, of uh, 
female leaders improve productivity, uh, share performance, uh, business results, and the overall economy. So I believe this is uh, this is something that we need uh, uh, to share with everybody, and uh, and everybody has to to think much more about that. But now let's uh, nail down to the question, uh, and we will have another couple of gear uh, with uh, all our panelists today. So. Uh, please, uh, uh, can you move the, the chart to the first question? OK, here we are. So uh, what's the effect of the pandemic uh, and the return to work? So I believe this is, uh, is the first question that I'm going to ask uh, to uh, every everybody here. Uh, let's get started with you, Marceline. What do you see from your experience uh, uh, you know, the effect of the pandemic and uh, the, the the return to work. What's your yeah. perspective here? What yeah, do you want so, to, uh, so the effect of the pandemic, we have seen that huh? you've shown that it hasn't had an effect on the uh, employability of women. We have also in practice seen that also uh, a lot of male uh, colleagues, but also in companies have been working on uh, homeschooling, taking care of the children and so forth. But in, in essence, I think the effect for the, of the pandemic was more, more on the women, uh, and I think it's very important to see uh, that we that, that to know that uh, is uh, and that we for the return to work is that we really do not make the usual assumptions eh? that that we do not that we do not make the assumption of how we, women want it uh, that we really create. Uh, solutions and a, and, and a mindset of flexibility to offer solutions that women need uh, uh, to be able to do the work. Uh, and, and I think that that is for me uh, an important message that I'm trying to discuss with uh, with, with clients as well, is as uh, uh, don't, don't go back to structured management, eh? like uh, Susanna was saying, uh, directive management, but, but ensure that you have flexibility to enable different kinds of people, different ages of women uh, uh, to, to be able to return to work. We see companies going to other regions, companies coming back from other regions because of the supply chain safety and so forth. They will need women, uh, so enable that flexibility of mindset to, to offer a hybrid. Don't assume they want to stay home for the children, offer hybrid work solutions. And that is what we see best at the moment, also in the researches that we're doing. Well, this is, you know, uh, this is uh, what you said about the flexibility is very important. Uh, and also, you know, the rebalancing of family care uh, responsibilities as well as careers, I believe, uh, is, uh, is crucial. Let's ask the same question. Thank you. Thank you, Marcelina. Let's ask the same question to Giovanna. Giovanna, over to you. Yes, thank you. Different point of view. I like to see because in any case uh, we have to manage our day by day activities and I want to make a list about uh, the pro and the cons to work at, at home. Pro, no time spending traveling. Good, really good, but think a little bit better. The 30 minutes, 40 minutes uh, uh, spent traveling with your car or on the train give you the possibility to think to yourself maybe to listen your preferred music that you can do if you stay at home. Second, we can save time, save money because we have not to get ready and to dress ourselves to go to the office. But in the other side, think your friends, girlfriends that find some difficult to recognize you because your hair or because you have some extra kilo to manage. <laughs> so other point. Flexibility, nice to be the flexibility. You can manage your family, children, husband, parents, and of course, job task. But what does it mean really? You have to wake up early in the morning, prepare the breakfast for everyone, convince your children to attend the lesson, remote lesson. And after no time for the coffee with two colleagues and speak a little bit about gossip or let, in addition, prepare the lunch, even if you are still in the call. And so you cannot stop the call, but you have to prepare lunch for your children. And in addition, working in the evening, because in the afternoon you have to manage the children that are forced to be at home for the lockdown. 
So of course I'm exaggerating the situation, but was to explain that the flexibility is certainly something positive, but must be managed carefully and protect ourselves, including additional responsibility also for the other components of the family and with the respect of everyone. So in my opinion, flexibility is nice but mixing flexibility and the requirement that we have to have external relationship. Oh, thank you, Giovanna. I love your, your list of pro and cons, actually. Uh, and uh, and uh, it's really something that we need to think about, you know. Also, as male, you know, we have seen uh, a, a number of divorces speaking up, uh, and this is the tells us a little bit the story about what does it mean to have uh, uh, women at, uh, at home and that we are not ready actually to manage differently the relationship, you know, and this is, uh, this is actually very interesting. So, Yaka, over, over to you. Well, I will, I will join what you said, Giovanna, and uh, you, Stefano. It's not only to have uh, uh, women at home, it's as well to have husbands at home, you know. It's a exactly. difficult situation, want, you know. That's what they meant. Yeah. Definitely, definitely, because we are not used to be all the time home and working from home and do everything from home. So I'm completely here with Giovanna and I'm really looking forward to what Marceline underlined to have this hybrid work. What is it for me? It's the possibility to work a bit from anywhere at the time that it's convenient for you, especially if you are a woman and you have to take care about your family or kids or your parents which are getting older or whatever you have to, to, to take care of. So I think this hybrid workforce model we are talking about is something which will come and my opinion is that Manpower Group is very well placed to support this, to help our clients with, because they will look for a solution. They will, don't, they will not know what to do. They are specialized in other areas. So in, let's say, a bit of business perspective, Marceline and colleagues, I would like to see more solutions we will be able to offer to our clients or to give them good references or tips even, because I think there will be a lot of transformation incoming in the marketplace in next two years. And coming back to the effect of the pandemic, I really believe the effect will be the most important to women in the workplace. They are mainly hit it by this. They have to stay home to take care of their kids or whatever they were doing. They had to uh, keep up with the families. They had to manage their time, working time, uh, family time and a bit a lot, a bit of uh, not a lot of free time. I think that women, unfortunately, will uh, come out from this uh, situation with big issues. Sorry to say, but I'm trying to be uh, honest. Uh, we are here to help them to come back to the workplace. And if I'm looking at this from more like psychological point of view, uh, in general, I think women will need more of courage, more of self-confidence, more of security on themselves and go to the workplace and say, I want this job, I am I am aimed to do this and this, I am able to cover this responsibility. I think there is a lot of uh, people who are underestimated only because uh, they are not men. Sorry, Stefano. Yeah. And I, I think there, there should be a lot of space for us as well, because in a hybrid workforce, I think there will be still this question is she have a kids, uh, how she will manage her family combined with the work. Why we don't uh, consider this for men? Why? Because we see, as you said, a lot of men now taking care about their children and they are doing it great. I think the, all the young generation of, of, of people, uh, generation uh, Y, generation uh, X or whatever generation we call it, they are much more, much more equal now. So let's talk about 
hybrid work. Let's talk about hybrid teams. Let's talk about equality in a workplace, uh, gender parity, which seems to me extremely important. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you, Yaka, for, uh, you know, this, uh, this perspective, I believe, uh, very valuable, you know, uh, and you, as you said, actually, we are, I believe we are in, at an inflection point, actually. So no question that we need uh, to look at the, the opportunities of setting up proper hybrid models. Uh, which are bringing, as uh, you, uh, many of you said, uh, you know, more flexibility, more opportunity, but as well as we need to, to put really more attention to the rebalancing of the family care responsibility, which is really very important, and employers and governments, they need uh, really to think about it and support it. And uh, no question, you know, for all the employers, a greater focus uh, must be placed on uh, changing prevailing gender dynamics in the workplace, which is still something that we can uh, we can find. But uh, no question that we need uh, really with uh, uh, all the commitment of uh, uh, you know the leaders to move forward uh, uh, and make uh, and make a better world uh, even here. So thank you, thank you for your perspective, and uh, let's move to Faiza. Faiza, over to you. Thank you, Stefano. Totally, Joanna and all our women leaders summarize very well. And so also I would like to add something. I think the separation of work um, and home was clear before the pandemic. Uh, now uh, women are facing the difficulties of uh, conducting household course, distance education of their children, high performance jobs in the same time period. So um, women are under much, much more heavier workload and stress than ever before, what I can say. But despite all difficulties, some of our women witness also an increase in their productivity uh, and their satisfaction due to elimination of transportation related problems and use their time more effectively with online meetings. Uh, I think working with the hybrid model uh, will be our new, new business model, uh, bring the efficiency for, for uh, both organization and employees, uh, depending on the needs of the role. At this point, it is necessary to focus on outputs uh, to define measurement very well at the same time, to communicate openly and transparently, uh, and to address the sense of belonging, which is seen as the most risky area. Uh, I believe that hybrid models will also increase uh, the participation of women in the workforce and their production uh, by correctly defining systems. So um, actually the new business model will support uh, the hybrid working models. Thank you, Faiza. Thank you very much for your perspective. Uh, very valuable as well. Uh, so I do believe that we need really uh, to make work uh, from home work. And this is actually is uh, what we need to really do and what we need to really support uh, our clients as well. I believe and also remove the obstacles, you know, recognize the obstacles women historically uh, face at work, and this is uh, really uh, very, very important as well. Let's move to Susanna. Susanna, last but not least, uh, your perspective. Over to you. Actually, I absolutely agree with uh, my colleagues uh, uh, what they previously said, that uh, the hybrid model, yes, it is very welcome, I think, uh, uh, from women. Uh, but on the other hand, there are some uh, uh, some uh, some uh, um, features of the hybrid model what uh, which are uh, which are quite uh, difficult. For example, uh, the work efficiency uh, because um, it is necessary to run into uh, to a work model and uh, get used to the fact that the household is no longer just a place for family life and relaxation, but also workplace which can cause a problems, especially at the very beginning. Uh, so um, sometimes, you know, the the work life balance uh, uh, disappears 
because actually uh, uh, many times we are working from from home and 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 everything what is uh, what is around the family uh, is uh, getting together uh, as Giovanna said that uh, we have to um, we have to cook we have to make lunch in the meantime we are calling so uh, sometimes uh, uh, it's not uh, it's uh, not the best thing but I'm quite convinced that the hybrid model will be the new normal for sure only we will need to to manage it uh, uh, correctly in our lives so this is this is my opinion thank you Susanna thank you very much <clears throat> Good one, good one, and uh, let's uh, let's uh, move to another question that uh, is uh, the following. You know, what companies need, uh, uh, you know, uh, for uh, having more uh, more uh, uh, more women uh, at at work? You know, uh, so we we said also during our first year that uh, you know having having more, more we, women actually is bringing some benefits as we said so i said very briefly that having women in leadership uh, really is uh, is uh, bringing uh, you know uh, more productivity uh, better performance better results uh, and uh, is uh, benefit uh, also the overall economy so uh, it's it's pretty clear if you look at the data the company need women more than ever so what what is your perspective here what do you suggest uh, to uh, our floor here marceline over to you yeah very interesting uh, very interesting question there stefano there, there's a couple of answers here i think uh, uh, in, in how business evolves in technology and uh, uh, with data, AI, automation and so forth, we see that uh, some of the more technical functions are becoming more automated and then there is more pressure to more human skills, capabilities such as empathy, sensing, communication. Uh, this is in general, I am generalizing here, yes, uh, uh, capabilities that are uh, more existent in, in female people. Uh, um, so, so I think that is one answer to your question, hey, why companies need us more than ever. There's also another, uh, uh, another factor is that um, we, uh, in the remote workforce, uh, working force, I think our capabilities of being empathetic um, uh, will ensure mental health, uh, which is also necessary for the business results again. Huh? So it, it is business profitability that we are driving for in the end. And there's one small example that I would like to give you is that in the beginning of the pandemic or the first two months, we had a uh, continual call every uh, other week. And in the third or the fourth call, there was one female that had, had the, the guts, she dared to say that she had anxiety feelings because of the pandemic. And that brought along a very interesting conversation, which was virtual, by the way, all digital. But then people started talking about uh, feelings and, and emotions, which is something that I think I, in my full career, I had never had met uh, uh, su such a deep kind of uh, conversation even happening virtual. And I think it's, it was started by a woman. By the way, men did also share their feelings. So, but that is, I think, what we, as female can add to the business structure uh, and with that also to the to the mental health of a company. Thank you, Marceline. So uh, for soft skills, very important, as you said, but also, you know, sharing emotions where, you know, it's uh, it's really hard and difficult when you are having virtual conversation and you know the uh, the timing usually is very tight and uh, you need to really be better in uh, uh, really communicating, uh, you know, your purposes with uh, everyone, but as well as, you know, bringing emotion, I believe it's a great value that we can uh, add, uh, uh, you know, uh, to the virtualization of uh, the remote working, no question. So moving to Giovanna, thank you so much. Giovanna, over to you. First, can I add a couple of words? Company need has more than ever women at leader, as a leader. Yes, why? I'm thinking about this uh, environment. Pandemic forced us to take drastic decisions. For example, apply a lot of people to stay at home, to work at home alone, uh, reducing the personal network. That uh, required us, like leaders, to find a different way to work with our team in order to manage this situation 
and so um, we we try to change our communication because we cannot have our colleagues close to us and had additional information if it is required. So we need to think our way to work with our colleagues, uh, spending much more time explaining the task to do, explain not only the task in detail, but also the context in order to give to our colleagues the capability to work alone at home without a very low possibility to share the information received to, to other, to, with other colleagues. That means, in my opinion, in addition, sorry, we need also to think another point. They are working at home with the family without connection, a lot of connection. We have to take care also if they are OK physically and also psychologically because all of us are living in an, in an environment that are not used for us. We are a social human people. And so this environment is not normal for our for our uh, for us like a human. This required has specified before by Barcelona, but all of you that we need to develop a different skill, empathy, uh, emotional intelligence and sensitivity. And these are skills, soft skill, more developed in the female. And it is the reason why we need to have more, more uh, involvement, more engagement in the organization in order to cover this period. This is my opinion. Oh, thank you, Giovanna. You are calling on, uh, you're sorry, you're calling out as well on the importance of uh, soft skills. And I would, uh, I would add that also, you know, if we look uh, how companies are changing, you know, working much more uh, uh, through project uh, with uh, really diversified team, I do believe that this is it's really very important to have uh, women in uh, part of those teams because, uh, you know, the uh, companies are becoming much more horizontal working through projects. So, having diversity in the team with uh, women, a good balance between women and, uh, and men, I do believe this is, is bringing a lot of value, you know, to the enhancement and to the creativity of uh, any project in, uh, in any organization. So Absolutely. I believe this is, uh, this is in, it's an important uh, point as well. Let's move to Yarka. Yarka, over to you. Absolutely, Stefano, thank you. And I don't want to repeat what my colleagues said already, even if this soft skill, uh, which women have probably a bit more than men, sorry for it, not for everybody, but in general, are very important as a leadership uh, profile today, is showing that we need people with empathy who is who are, let's say, more listening to other people needs so they can better coordinate their work, their uh, opportunities, etc. So I will not go there because we said enough already, but there is one thing which was not mentioned and why I think companies need us more than ever, I mean us women, is that we are still child, curious, and able to learn, you know, in different yeah. stages of our life, we need to ad adapt to a different situation. You know, you are a young woman without having a lot of uh, lot of uh, duties. Then yeah. you have husband and kids, so you your life is changing like dramatically. Or you have kids, or you have husband. It's still something which you need to take care of. And then you are coming to the to the period like me where your kids are grown up, your husband as well, and then you can <laughs> still go to uh, develop yourself, you know, to 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 enjoy your career uh, uh, path, etc. So I think we are much more in the life uh, shape which helps us to change flexibly all the time, you know, to adopt ourselves. And yeah. I think this is one of the uh, leaders, uh, uh, let's say, characteristic which is needed uh, in uh, nowadays. And there is one thing which we mentioned already. I just want to underline curiosity and agility is something 
which leaders need all the time. Because look how the economy, uh, IT, all the world is developing. It's going faster and faster and faster. So we need to be curious to understand. And from the other side, we need to give uh, opportunities to other people, of new, to new talents, to people who know more than we do as leaders, to help us to still continue to develop in this very fastly changing world. Yeah, no, thank Which you, thank you, Jark. Yeah, no, very, very clear and, uh, you know, uh, no question that in such a kind of uh, volatile environment, in such a kind of uncertainty, uh, that actually in many countries we are still facing right now, you know, no question that we need to develop different capabilities, you know, as you said, uh, adaptability, flexibility, learnability, which is very important uh, because of, uh, you know, all the trends uh, really uh, accelerated uh, uh, even more during the pandemic, especially the technology so i do believe that we need to develop but having uh, women uh, in leadership position i believe it's very important to really uh, give more emphasis uh, to such a kind of skills uh, that every company needs to develop so susanna thank you so much uh, over to you oh, phaser phaser sorry i was uh, I was uh, really jumping to to the end. I apologize. Uh, thank no. you, Yarka and Faiza, over to you. No problem, Stefano, and thank you. I totally agree with uh, Yarka, actually, especially the pandemic uh, period show us our ability for the adaptability and also flexibility and the agility. Uh, I would like to also uh, underline uh, this topic. Uh, what I think the ultimate benefit uh, of having women in the work environment, I think, uh, is the diversification of work and management styles. Uh, to be honest, as women, we put more emphasis on empathy, sensitivity and communication. Also, we can bring relatively more analytical perspectives, especially and also a agile approach, unpredictable conditions. Um, I have always had the chance to observe women's ability to do much more plant and uh, multitasking at the same time. Uh, although I do not believe in gender restriction as a female uh, leader, I can say that uh, women leaders are more sensitive and creative about the motivation and needs of employees, uh, especially in the tough times. Women prefer to look more in detail and be more functional, which uh, I can add. And also thanks to our empathy, uh, intuition and optimistic perspective, uh, we are able to establish a stronger bond with our employees and more sustainable, balanced business relationship with, with our partners. I think uh, the diversity on the management side uh, will enable the formation of different ideas and uh, increase quality of decisions, Stefano. This is my opinion. Well, thank you. Thank you, Faiza. Thank you very much. And uh, let's move to Susanna. Over to you, Susanna, now. now okay. I'm right. Sorry for, you know, jumping to the end before, but now it's your turn. Over I, to want to, I want to highlight something what uh, Giovanna said that I liked a lot, uh, the social contact. Actually, I think uh, oh, we are, uh, we need more social contact uh, than men. Thus, we are able to obtain more information than men and we are to able to manage our stuff, you know, and our organization with more information, actually, sometimes even better than men. So we have to tell this because this is <laughs> this is the fact. <laughs> and on the other hand, uh, something else what is uh, I think really uh, positive uh, um, on the woman that uh, usually the women have a quite uh, a strong educational background uh, because growing of children, because you know managing everything what is around us uh, during our let's say normal life, family life. So uh, we are able to have a different approach to solving tasks than men. 
and um, and this educational background gives us even uh, maybe, uh, as Yarka said, uh, uh, more learnability. So maybe we are we have a, a higher learnability quotient. For yeah. sure. Interesting. We are more curious, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> we are at least. <laughs> sure. Thank you so so much, Susanna. Thank you very much. Uh, so now let's uh, uh, let's move. Uh, you know, after this uh, very interesting conversation, let's move to the last question uh, that we have today. So let's uh, uh, really try to answer to the challenge of managing an equal pipeline of talent, because uh, you know this is from the company perspective is uh, really very important. So we need uh, really to start from the pipe of talent. Uh, in order to really, uh, I would say, move to a better gender parity in this new reality. So let's uh, get started with you, Marceline, about that. You are an expert, you know. Thank you very that. much, Stefano. Uh, thank you very much. What, what, what is interesting, what we see uh, with our customers that we work for and with, uh, uh, part, the challenge of managing an equal pipeline of talent partly lies in privacy regulations and labor laws, what you can know about people uh, when eh? so so I think that is sometimes that uh, that prevents us from um, maybe positive uh, discrimination uh, because you you're not allowed to use the kind of, of knowledge. Uh, so why I am uh, this is one of my drives to be a very positive uh, advocate of uh, digital talent acquisition because, through uh, an, an uh, assessment on many layers. Uh, so cognitive assessment uh, in the educational area, which Susanna was referring to, but also on the behavioral part, on the adaptation, the learnability and so forth. I think assessment in a digital way will bring us the op opportunity to enable companies to unbiased, so without a bias towards fe female or male, make an assessment of a person uh, to onboard as a talent. So I think that that is an important answer to the challenge. Um, uh, and uh, the other uh, area which I am proud of because we practice what we preach within Manpower Group, but we are also using that towards our clients is reflection on sea level uh, on personal behavior towards uh, diversity. So really having uh, really dare to look at yourself, uh, how you are uh, uh, looking at, at, at female in this case, uh, uh, in, in hiring people. Uh, I think that that is another area where we are uh, coaching companies uh, and enabling companies also to, um, yeah, to, to perform on that one. So, uh, and, and again, happy to be working for Manpower Group because this is one of the, uh, the factors that uh, I feel very comfortable with, with uh, within our company. Thank you, thank you, Marceline. Very, very good. Uh, I want to really switch rapidly to Giovanna because I'm cautious of the time and we are running a little bit late. So, Giovanna, over to you. Very fast. So, I collect all the skills that you mentioned before. Emotional intelligence, empathy, resilience, problem solving, agility, flexibility, learnability, sensitivity. If the company wants to success in this environment, need to have a C-level composed by talent with their both future. The majority of them we know are more developed in the women. So that, in my opinion, is clear that if you more women that you have in your C-suite, more possibility to have success. Thank Finish. you, Giovanna. Very clear and straightforward. Over to you, Yarka, for a quick <laughs> Very quickly. That, that's a very, very strong statement, Giovanna. I, I really, I just, I'm just joining this, you know, and I'm joining as well Marceline with, with their uh, positive discrimination. I think this is very important. It will not be, it will, it will not happen. We have to support it. We have to support to have more women in a sea level. And if we will not help it, it will not happen. This is, this is maybe my statement, Stefano, and happy to be with Manpower Group for such a long time because we have this fa fantastic culture of uh, women uh, being involved in every level. So thank you. Thank you, Yarka. Faisa, over to you. Stefano, I would like to touch a glass ceiling issue. Actually, women uh, are having difficulties with uh, regard to the glass ceiling, which is metaphor used to represent an invisible barrier uh, 
um, which prevents women from rising uh, a certain level in a hierarchy. But first of all, thanks to my company, my uh, manpower group, and also some foreign companies and organizations in Turkey seem to be more sensitive to these issues, especially in the last five years. For example, thanks to network here with the NGOs and mentoring structures, women have entered, entered the board of directors of many companies as a C-level. And thus, we started to see our women in large numbers in boards of directors. By sharing our research on this topic, topic uh, published by Manpower Group, also uh, we aim to minimize these problems and contribute to this field. Thank you very much, Faiza. Very clear. Susanna, over to you for the last uh, answer. Well, in a few words, uh, I think the main uh, challenge of managing an equal pipeline uh, is even in, uh, in the communication barrier, maybe. So uh, we have uh, uh, to be accurate in, in, in the communication uh, in order to, uh, to unify and not divide uh, the, uh, the various pipelines of the, of the talent talents. And uh, we have to give equal opportunity, as you mentioned before, for sure. This is uh, one of the most important things. And uh, give the same chance uh, uh, for the career opportunity, vertically or horizontally, that's, uh, that's the same. I think Manpower Group is, is uh, a great example of this, a great example. Thank you, Susanna. Thank you very much. So we are, we are actually at the end of our time together. I know that we have a question in the chat, but because we are running late, of course, we will come back to you with, uh, uh, with actually the, the proper answer. So thank you very much. It was an interesting conversation and we uh, really have shared a little bit what is needed uh, really to uh, move faster uh, the gender parity in, uh, in the new reality. Of course, uh, you will receive our uh, white paper uh, as well as, uh, you know, all, uh, um, I would say, the 10 uh, most important points, uh, most important ways, I would say, employers uh, needed to tackle to really uh, move uh, uh, progress uh, in the gender parity in this uh, new reality. We have seen that we are in inflection point, as we said, the more attention really must be paid uh, to the rebalancing of family care responsibility, as well as uh, really the importance of uh, the skills, especially the soft, soft skills. And uh, really, uh, again, a greater focus must be placed on uh, uh, changing prevailing gender dynamics in the workplace. So at the end, uh, really what I want to say with, uh, uh, you know, a nice quote, uh, what is the greatest lessons a woman should learn? Uh, actually, that since day one, she's already had everything she needs with herself. It's a word that uh, convinced her she did not. So thank you so much for participating and looking forward to meeting you again in our next panel. Thank you so much. Thank Enjoy you. the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 B